Hi, this is David at Mash IT. Tonight we're going to do a very quick gaming test on the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Nano that we recently did the review on. Now, due to the fact that this is obviously an Ultrabook and it isn't going to be the most powerful gaming machine, these games will be run at reasonably low settings and they will be sort of uh, your more your eSports titles and your AAA gaming titles. We'll put the games listed in the timestamps down below so that you can go to the games that you wish if you don't want to watch them all. Uh, and we're going to record this directly over my shoulder because doing it in OBS is too much of a hit on the frames per second on this Ultrabook. So, first game we're going to look at is going to be Fortnite. Um, at the top of the screen, I've tried to make it as large as possible, I've got an MSI overlay so you can see the frames per second, you can see the temperature, and you can see the wattage and the speed of the CPU. Unfortunately, I can't get the GPU to show, but still this will get you a good amount of information. From playing this around so far, what I'm finding is that it's pulling about 18 watts normally when I'm gaming. So that's not bad considering the size of this uh, Ultrabook and very similar to the Dell XPS 9310 which has got the more powerful i7. So this seems to keep up with that one. Okay, so this is the settings that I'm using currently to try uh, Fortnite. So bear in mind this is integrated graphics. I know they're supposed to be better, they're still not brilliant. So we're gonna be running at 1200 by 800 full screen. It's a 16 by 10 screen. And then mostly sort of medium or low settings and at DirectX 11. Now the frame rate always dips when you're in the battle bus. Not that I'm a big player of this, but just from my experience so far using this. I uh, just want to also mention that this is the default uh, Lenovo install with the default drivers with just Windows updates completed so all our drivers are up to date. So I played just played around there. Um, you can see it's pretty stable, about 50, 60 frames per second. I could probably drop a couple more settings down if I needed to, but it's quite comfortable to play. But the best thing about this is the laptop is so quiet whilst doing this. It's really nice. And also the keyboard and fan are not even that hot. So you're not gonna be bothered, you know, keeping your keys, you're not gonna get sweaty palms or burn your fingertips. So quite a comfortable experience. So we've played a couple of rounds now. The watches has dropped down to about 15 at certain points in the game, uh, which is kind of what you'd expect for this ULV processor. The frame rate has dipped to about 35, 40 frames per second. It's absolutely worse, but it's been pretty playable on the whole. Uh, it looks good still as well at 1200 by 800. So considering this is just a tiny little 13 inch Ultrabook, I'm quite pleased with its performance, especially with how quiet and uh, cool it's running. Okay, so we're now going to test Rocket League, so nice easy game to play yet again. Um, let's have a look. I might leave it on its suggested settings, so in fact, let's just try it. No, let's leave it on suggested settings. We're going to leave it on its suggested settings, which is 1440 by 900, uh, which is 16 by 10 aspect ratio, with pretty much everything on high. Uh, it was looking pretty nice, so I've just come into the game, so let's give it a try. Now, I don't play this, so I do apologise in advance. Feels pretty smooth, looks nice. If I can find the ball.
it's got to be on easy mode. Okay, now we're going to try out uh, Dota 2. I'll show you the settings that we're running. Okay, so we've got this set to pretty much high settings. Uh, everything's pretty much ticked apart from AA, and I'm running it at 75% of its full high DPI resolution. So I feel that's must be about 1080p sort of settings. Let's go have a quick bot match. So we've been running for probably about an hour through these games on and off so far. We are sticking at about 15 watts now with pretty good temps at 64 degrees. Um, you can see obviously the clock speeds are dipping down a little bit. But it's still sticking to about 60 frames per second so not bad at all considering I've got quite high settings selected. The game looks really good. But what's great is the laptop is so quiet. You know, it's not distracting like some Ultrabooks. You don't get a nasty whiny fan noise. I'm not sure if you can see in the background, um, I've got a watt meter running. This is pulling about 37, 38 watts from the mains. Okay, so we're going to play CSGO, put it on full screen and 1440 by 900 and I'm going to put this on sort of medium to low settings, see how we do. Right, let's give that a try. Well, this is certainly playable as, as you can see I've got medium sort of settings and 1440 by 900 screen resolution. It still is a little bit jerky at times. Uh, I think a lot of this is driver based with these new uh, XE chips because one minute you're getting amazing frames per second and the next one I'm, I'm dipping down so I'm hoping this is something Intel might pull their finger out and improve. But you know it's certainly playable for an ultrabook still very playable. Okay so we're going to run the Warhammer Total War benchmark. This is set at uh, low quality 1280 by 800. So this is obviously all set to low, and we're going to run the benchmark. So you can see though we're running at low settings and low resolution, uh, we get more than playable frame rates. I think you probably tinker a couple of settings and uh, get it looking slightly nicer as well and uh, you probably enjoy the game a bit more because you don't need the high frames per second with a strategy game like this. But for an integrated graph it's a little ultra but this is pretty good going.
Right, so we've got an average frames per second of 85, so that's not bad at all. Now for our last game, we're going to do Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And we're just going to run the built-in benchmark, running it at 1280 by 800 and uh, lowest settings. So hopefully that you've enjoyed this video. I'm going to leave this one and uh, call it a day after this. Uh, if there's anything you particularly want to know or want to ask, then please drop it in the comments down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Please like and subscribe because there's going to be plenty more videos coming on this X1 Nano. I'll leave you with this benchmark.